Hey everybody. Today we're learning the per package. This is a highly underrated, underutilized element of the core tidyverse that helps us work with lists and do repetitive tasks more quickly and efficiently. Um, the core workhorse function that we're going to want to look at in per is the map function. And the map function essentially does iteration for you. It'll work over vectors, it'll work over lists, and it'll work over data frames. So let's start with a simple vector. Let's just take the numbers 1 to 5 and do the same thing over and over and over again to it. Let's take the square root of every element in that list. And you see that we got back a list in this case with the square roots of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in the five different positions. The output from map is a list. This is a very general flexible structure, but it's also a little bit unwieldy. And for something like this, you probably want a numeric vector out. So map has a bunch of friends, and if you just look at the, um, the, the autofill suggestions here, you can see a bunch of them. Map character, map double, map data frame, and so on. So um, map double lets us specify that we would like the output of this thing, and I'll just copy and paste those arguments, to be, instead of a list, a vector of doubles like so. There's also map character, map logical, and so on. So this, um, this suffix here is telling R exactly what sort of output it should be given. Now, of course, this example here is a little bit trivial. We could have just done square root of 1 to 5 directly and gotten the same output. The thing about map is that it is much more general. In particular, it works with lists and with columns of data frames. So let's see an example like that where this vectorized behavior won't help us directly. Let's make a, a silly list. And of course, it's going to be a list. I want maybe just the word foo and then the numbers 1 to 5. Let's put a data frame in there since we can, the faithful data frame. And um, finally, let's put something logical. Let's put true. And I would like to just get the class of each of the four elements of this list. So I'd like to apply the class function to each of these four. Now, if I try and do it directly, class of silly list, um, where I would like to have four results, I'm actually just going to get one. This is going to tell me that, of course, silly list is a list. And if you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. If I want to see all the different um, types for the all the different elements of the list, I need to use a map function. I'm going to use map character. I'd like to get a character vector back. And for each element of silly list, I would like to find out the class. So um, class. There we go. And so we get our character vector back, just like we would hope. Um, the fact that the output is always going to be of a predictable type is extremely useful when you're working with R. The fact that the first argument is the object that you're working with is wonderful also because it means that we can pipe when we're using a list. I could have done silly list with a pipe and then map character with the list. Um, I'm going to use that behavior in this next example. I'm going to take the faithful data set which um, is a data frame with two columns representing the um, eruption length and waiting time between eruptions of the old faithful geyser in the United States. And what I'd like to do is to convert each of the two columns to character vectors. So uh, it's going to be a map, of course. Here I'm wanting my output to be a data frame with two columns, both of which are going to be characters. So map is going to iterate over the faithful data set. The faithful data set here is being treated as a list. And the two elements of the list are going to be the two columns in that data set. And for each of those two columns, I would like to apply, apply as dot character. And um, I think I should save this because it's not going to print out nicely as faithful character. And uh, let's just take a view on that. So you can see here the numbers are the same. Maybe view isn't the command I want. Maybe glimpse, so I can actually see the types. If I can spell glimpse correctly. There we go. And you can see that now, although the values are all the same, 
they're now listed as characters, not as numbers. Wonderful. Um, another advantage of the, um, the this syntax, the map double, map character, and so on, is that if you make a mistake and try and apply a function with the wrong kind of output, R is going to give you an error, give you a warning, um, or not just a warning, give you an actual error. It won't let you proceed. So um, let's see here. A simple mistake that you might make, for instance, is saying, OK, let's take the faithful data set. And since we're applying as character, it seems like we should get character vectors out. Let's use map character. Of course, that's not right. What we're really expecting out is a data frame. So if we do make this mistake, R will give us a hard stop. It will give us an error and won't let us proceed. This is um, hugely useful because, um, again, if you're coding in a pipeline, for instance, or doing a long series of functions, um, and you end up having something of the wrong type, it can create problems downstream that might be harder to find and diagnose. Sometimes you'll want to do the same thing over and over again to every element in a vector or list or data frame, but there won't be a built-in R function to do it for you. And you've got a couple choices in that situation, both of which you'll probably do many, many times over your data science career. First of all, you can just literally build a function. So let's see an example of that. I'm going to take the original faithful data set, and I want to convert all of the numbers here into seconds. They're listed as minutes right now. So um, I'm going to build a new function called min to sec. It's going to be um, a function. I'm defining a function of x, which is just going to be the number of minutes. And I'm just going to take x to multiply by 60 to get the number of seconds. There we go. Got to execute that correctly. OK, so um, let's now do faithful seconds. And um, I'm going to take faithful and pipe it into a map df. The output that I want is going to be a data frame here. And um, for each column in that faithful data frame, I would like to apply the min to sec function. We can glimpse that to see that we got it right. And you can see that we did. The numbers have gotten substantially bigger. OK, so if you're going to be using a function multiple times, or if the function is at all complicated, I highly recommend writing it up like a function. Um, however, sometimes, and this is probably a, a decent example, sometimes you'll just have a function that does a certain thing that you need to do on the fly, and then you can forget about it afterwards. And um, if you have a simple function like that, the better way to go is generally using an anonymous function. So let's see an example like that. I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did here. But instead of applying the function that I've defined, I'm going to do an anonymous function. And there's kind of a long form syntax and a short form syntax. The short form syntax is just like this, function of x, x times 60. And that'll give us the same thing. We can just glimpse that again. Um, you get tired of writing out function all the time. And so um, as of just a few versions ago, R provides a nice um, short syntax. And that's this wave syntax. It's just slash of x. There you go. And that'll be exactly the same as we can see here. Sometimes when you're using a function in R, you'll need to specify additional arguments. And um, we'll need more syntax for that. Additional arguments. So um, for this next example, I am going to take a vector of, uh, of means. Let's do 1, 10, 20, 50. And I would like to get five random numbers for each one of those from a normal distribution with the corresponding mean. So mean of 1, 10, 20, and 50. And we'll let the standard deviation be 1 in each case. Now, if we look at our norm, which you do have to spell correctly. If we look at the help file here, you can see that for R norm, the first argument isn't mean, actually. It's the number of values you want here. And I want n to always be 5. So that's going to create a bit of a challenge, because the second argument is the one we want to iterate over. So we've got a couple of choices. 
I'm going to show you the old school and less recommended way first. Um, so let's apply a map. The object, of course, that I want to work with is means. I want to iterate over that. Um, the function that I'm going to apply is R norm. Hey, by the way, I'm leaving it as map and not putting in um, map character double or anything like that because I do want a list out here. Um, every time I do an R norm, I'm expecting to get a vector of five values. And I want to do that um, what, four times. So I want to hold that in a list. If I wanted to, I could make it a data frame or bind this somehow, but I'm not going to mess with any of that. So the kind of old school syntax for something like this is to pass the additional arguments with their names after the, um, after the function that you're mapping over. And you'll see that works. So here I have five values from a normal distribution with mean one, from mean ten with mean 10, and so on. The reason that that syntax is um, second best is because it really looks like n equals 5 is an argument in the map function, whereas, of course, it is an um, argument in the R norm function. So um, it's not clear when you're reading it just as a human being, even though R does know what's going on. And we'd like our code to be human readable first and, um, and hopefully also machine readable. I think this um, issue is most clear when you make a mistake. So instead of M, let's say we do NM. Let's say there's just a typo. I hit an extra key. If I execute that, and I'll just make a note that there's an error, the error message is not as descriptive as I would like, and not as descriptive as the good folks at Tidyverse would like. It says that the error is in map, and uh, it's caused by the argument f. Really, the error is in R norm, and it's being caused by um, this unused argument nm, which is an argument in the R norm, not in, um, not in map. So, of course, the better solution is to do a function of one sort or another. So let's iterate over means, but now let's do an anonymous function um, of means. You know, let's leave, let's use something different, m. And I want to do r norm of 5 comma m, and that should do it. And you can see we got out the list that we wanted with a lot less typing. So anonymous functions are your friend. They will save you a bunch of typing but they can very quickly lead to opaque code, code that's hard to read, hard to work with, hard to fix after the fact. Um, if you are on the fence about whether to use anon an anonymous function or to write a function more explicitly as I did up here, my strong advice is to write the function explicitly and give it a descriptive name. Just in the long run, you'll be happier. The next thing I wanna do is multiple iterations. So in this last example, suppose that we wanted um, not just different means, but also different standard deviations. So um, let's see here. Let's do standard deviations of, I don't know, 0 0.1, 1, 3, and 5, just to make up some numbers. So um, what I would like to do, again, is to get four vectors of random values from a normal distribution, but now I want the first vector to have mean 1 and standard deviation 0.1, the second to have mean 10 and standard deviation 1, and so on. So the map command isn't going to do it. The map command only iterates over one vector. The thing that we want is map 2, mapping over two different vectors. And uh, as you can see from that pop-up that we got there, we have to specify the two things that we want. Um, in addition to the, um, the function that we want to apply. So um, let's see here. The two things that I want to iterate over are means and standard deviations. And um, I want to do another anonymous function here. Here, maybe let me align this vertically just for legibility. And I want to iterate over m and s. And um, the way that I am going to iterate is at every step, I am going to apply a function here for the given mean and standard deviation, it's going to give me five randomly generated values back from that corresponding normal distribution. And you can see that it did that. I've got five random values for each of these with the corresponding mean and the corresponding standard deviation. 
So iterate over two vectors. Vectors. Now um, notice that um, this went through in sort of a um, uh, a pairwise function: 1.1, 1 .1, 10, 1, 23, and so on. It did not do all combinations. So um, if you want all combinations, use um, the expand grid function. And there's actually two of them. The tidy one is expand grid. That's the more modern version. It's from tidyverse. It's in the tidier package. Create a tibble from all combinations of inputs. Um, there is the more old fashioned expand dot grid. They're fairly similar. Um, the expand grid gives you a table, or the expand underscore grid gives you a tibble rather than a data frame, and the sorting makes a little bit more sense. Um, let's just see what expand grid, expand underscore grid of um, means comma SDs looks like. So you can see you've got all the combinations of the means and standard deviations. So there are 16 rows. All right, what if we want um, different numbers of random values? So we want to iterate over three vectors this time. So um, let's do nums. The number of vectors that I want is uh, one to four. I only have four vector or four values this time. So um, I want an analog of map two that's going to iterate over three or more vectors. And in that, in um, here, the one that we want is pmap. Now pmap doesn't know how many vectors we're going to give it. So it doesn't just have two arguments or three arguments for the, um, the vectors we're passing it. Instead, we have to pass the vectors to it as a list. So I want to iterate over nums, m, and s. And the function I want to apply, of course, is r norm. And um, the things that I want to pass it aren't m and s. They are means and sds's. There we go. So again, we get a list, pmap, like map2 is giving us back a list. And um, in the first position, we have one randomly generated number from a normal distribution with mean 1 and standard deviation 0.1. In the second position of the list, we have two randomly generated numbers, and so on. OK, so there's a lot of other cool things that per will do. Hopefully, this gave you a good introduction to the map family of functions and its variant. Um, variants, map 2, and pmap.